When you're working on a project, one of the most important things is having a version control system. What I mean by this is, imagine you're working on a project, you make this really cool level, but the next day you work on it, you accidentally delete something, your whole level is ruined and your life is completely over basically. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just go back to that previous state when your level was working? On top of that, a version control system allows you to easily collaborate with others on your team and share your project with them. In this video, we will be covering how to set up a version control system like Git and how you can configure it with Unity and even push it to a remote repository. So if that's what you are looking for, be sure to stick around. First things first, what is Git? Like I said, Git is a version control system and it is basically used to track changes in a file. So imagine I'm writing a script, I change it, Git knows it changed, and then I can commit it, and then the changes are persisted in the project and everyone can download it. On top of that, it allows you to go back in time, so to say, to go back to a previous state easily. Covering Git is an entire topic by itself. In this video, we will be focusing on integrating Git and Unity alongside with some very basic Git commands. So there are other things like Git in the world. You have Perforce, Plastic, Subversion, things like that. So why did we choose Git? First of all, we already have a lot of experience with it because we come from a software engineering background, but also Git is completely open source. It is in the world the most used version control system. So there are a lot of tutorials on the internet and documentation. There's also a great community that can help you out if you need it. A main advantage of being open source like Git is that it can be hosted completely freely. This is how we do it internally. And of course, you do have to have a server and have to manage it and things like that. And if you don't want that, there are free alternatives anyway, like GitHub or GitLab. And if your product is growing and it's, for example, too big to be hosted freely, they are probably the cheapest option either way. So I talk very highly of Git and it is amazing, but what are some of the limitations? Before we get started, you have to know that in this example, we use Git together with Git large file storage. It allows you to store large files like the name suggests. However, there is one limitation and that is that one file cannot be bigger than five gigabytes. Then Git is unable to track it. I don't know what the limits are for Perforce, service uh, subversion and plastic, but they are more focused on files. So I can imagine them being bigger. On the other side, when do you have a file that is bigger than five gigabytes in a game? So now that we covered the basics of Git, let's see how we can integrate it with Unity. First things first, we of course need to install Git. So let's just go to Google and type in Git for Windows. Then we get on the downloads page and just click download. Once we downloaded it, we can open up the installer. And by default, all the settings should be good to go. So we can install it in our C, uh, C drive. We have a lot of options here. I prefer to keep these at the default. So let's just spam next. And then hit install. After a brief period, we will have Git installed. Great. However, what I mentioned in the intro is that we also need Git large file storage. So that's also something we have to download separately. So while it's installing, let's also just Look for that one. Hit download and install it as well. Of course, you can find the links to these downloads in the description. With our new installer, we also just spam next. The defaults should be good to go. So another thing we have to do is actually install Git LFS in Git. Sounds weird, but we have to do it. So how do we do that? We can just open a command prompt and type in git lfs install. Hit enter and just wait for a bit. And then we see git lfs initialized. So we got everything installed, but we didn't actually do anything with it yet. For this example, I created a new Unity project that we will be using to track using git. So first thing we can do is open it into our file explorer. And then we actually need to initialize Git in this uh, new folder. So what, how we can do this is we go to our path and we type in CMD. This opens up a command prompt in the folder that we are actually using for our project. And then we can just type in Git in it. And then we can see it says that we initialized an empty Git repository. Before we go any further, we need to do a little bit of configuring. There are a couple of things that are important in a Git project. First of all is, for example, the git ignore. 
This file tracks how you can ignore files that you do not want to push. For example, if you make a build of your game, but don't want to store it, this is where you can add it. Unity has a default git ignore, but you can configure it. I'll just open one that we use for Forge Industry, our own game, and I'll just cover a couple of the things that are inside it. Of course, you can find our version of our git ignore and our git attributes, more on that later, in the description down below. So here you can see the git ignore, and these are the files that we do not want to track. A great example of this is, for example, that we added ourselves is this mods folder. Why? Our game supports mods, but we do not want for example, if we create a mod of our own and are testing it to commit it into our repository. You can easily add here folders or files that you do not want to commit. By default, you should not leave this empty for Unity. There is a default available from Unity itself because you do not want to push everything like the, the other files that Unity uses like for caching and purposes. So it is important that you configure this correctly. What do we do now is we can just copy this git ignore and paste it into our project. So this is our project and we just paste it here. So now we have in our root folder, a git ignore file. Amazing. However, since we are using git large file storage, we also need to configure our git attributes. What's important here is that it basically tells git what files we want to use for git uh, large file storage and what we don't. Just like the git ignore, we have an example available and we will be uh, providing a link down below. So. This is the, the git attributes file that Unity provides, and you can also edit this. What is important here is that we have a way to say how Unity merges this. So you can see here, you can configure the Unity YAML merge or the large file source merge. But the default should be fine on this part, but if you're experiencing troubles, this is a way that you can investigate that something is going wrong. Just like the git ignore, we will be pasting this in our root repository. And then, Last thing we need to do to configure Git is basically to tell Unity to always use text. By default, I think in the latest versions of Unity, these are already, this already happens. However, if you're using an older version, it might be that you have to configure it. So let's just double check it just in case. How we can do this is you are in Unity, you go to Edit, Project Settings. Let's just drag it up here. Then we have Editor. And when we are here, we just search for Asset Serialization. So you can see asset serialization here, and the mode has to be on force text. So like I said, this is the default in new projects, but if you're using an older version of Git, just check it just to be sure, or yeah, you're not gonna have a good time. And that's basically all the setup we need to do to configure Git and Unity together. Great. However, like I mentioned, we also want this on a, on a separate place. For this example, we will be using GitLab since we are hosting ourselves, And this is the way that you can share it, for example, with others. Like the changes I make now in this project, I'm going to push to a server. And then, for example, Marnix, when he's uh, working on the project later on, can just say, give me the latest updates and can continue working on the things that I already worked on. So how do we do this? Let's first show you our GitLab. So I already made a new project here. Depending if you use GitHub, GitLab, things like that. The, the process is a bit different, but you basically want to create an empty project. Uh, so I already made it. Just. Google how you have to make it in GitHub if you're using GitHub or Bitbucket, whatever. So we basically already configured the project locally and we now want to push it to a server. So how do we do that? We open our command prompt back again. And if we type now in git status, we should get an overview of everything that has changed. So we can see the folders that Git is going to track. Great, this is what we want. But how do we get it to a server? Well, there are a couple of things that you have to do. Like I said, I won't be going into details of Git. However, I'll just cover a couple of commands. For example, if we do git add and then a, a dot, we basically tell git to add anything that is changed in the current folder. So if we press enter, after we wait a bit, because this is the first time running it, you can see git is doing a lot of things. It is basically adding it to be ready to commit to the server. So yeah, this can take a while, as you can see. I assume we, we, we speed up this part a bit because, yeah. Oh, we're done. Great. So now everything is added to what it's called, I think, staging. And now we can commit it to the server. We just do this by typing git commit. Now we do dash m to say we add a message. For example, here we can say 
initial setup. After we do this, we just hit enter, let git do its thing. And then you can see, since this is the first time we actually run this command, we need to configure a couple of things. It gives us an example of what we have to do. So let's just do exactly what it tells us. And that is git config dash dash global user dot email. This is a query keyboard. I am not used to this. And then we type in the email we want to use. And then we just run the second command, which is to set our name. So also just git config dash dash global user global is not spelled with a Q once again, user at all, email uh, name, I'm sorry. And now we say Marnix because we're using his computer. After we've done that, we can just run our git commit again, again. This is just something we have to do the first time we are setting it up, but since it's the first time we are connecting it, we have to do it. Hit enter. And then you see, we didn't add anything, what the fuck? As you can see earlier, Unity was open and for some reason Git didn't like us doing our initial commit. So if, you're, if it says you have to add it again and nothing was added basically, just run the git add command again. So now if we've done that, we can just do our commit, like our initial setup one hit enter, and this time we should get everything committed. So you see it's counting the object and adding everything. In theory, this is it to run Git locally at least, but like I said, we want to use it on a server. So you can just leave it at this and use Git as is, and you have a version control system, but it's always be better to have it offsite somewhere. So if something happens to your laptop, you at least have something. Git is not a backup, but it is always good to have it as some sort of a backup. I'm sorry, Marnix. <laughs> so how do we do this is we have to run one more command and it's pretty easy. It's basically we type in git remote add origin. And then we need to add our remote URL. So what is this? If we go to our GitLab project or GitHub in your case, if you're using GitHub, we can just copy and paste the URL at the top and just say, paste it here, and then hit enter. That's it. So basically we now link the two, but we need to push it either way. So how do we do this? It's a simple command called git push dash u origin, and then master or main, depending on what your main branch is. Hit enter. And since this is the first time running this command, you can see it's missing the uh, configuration and we need to log in. This is the moment where Marnix walks over here and types in his password because I don't know his. <laughs> After we've entered everything, we can just hit sign in and we can see we are basically connecting the two. So this is the moment where we are basically uploading our files to the server. So just give it a brief moment and it should be done. If everything has been going correctly, you should also see that Git in your terminal is saying uploading LFS objects. This means that large file storage was configured correctly. Five minutes later. All right, so now everything should be uploaded. So if we go back to our repository in the cloud on our server, we can just hit refresh. And if everything is going correctly, we should see our project here. So as we can see, we did our initial setup, Marnix committed it, and we can see our assets, library, packages, things like that. Great. One last thing I want to show you is, for example, if you're working with a friend on this, how can he get it? Just type in git clone and then copy the URL once again. So now I won't be doing this because it also takes a while and I'm working on my own for this time. So yeah, this basically covers the basics of using Unity and Git together. But there are a couple of things you can do to improve your workflow. For example, some people might prefer a graphical user interface. Some tools for this are like Git Kraken, Source Tree, GitHub Desktop. There is even a uh, Unity plugin called GitHub for Unity. Though I don't have the best experience with that, your mileage may vary. You can also try that one. Also, if you do like using the command prompt, you have a lot of more fine grained control. So do whatever you fancy. Just be sure you use a version control system for your code base so you never lose progress. And that about wraps up this video. If you do like this kind of content or you want more deep dives into Git or other Unity tutorials and have any topics you want us to cover, do let us know in the comments. 
On this channel, we don't just cover tutorials like this one, but also we go, when we go to conference, we make a little vlog or other business related things for your indie game dev journey. We try to cover as broad of a base as possible to get you guys started. So if that's something that interests you, do be sure to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and see you guys in a few days. Bye.